everybody. I'm Beaver. And I'm Ron Bearden. How y'all doing today? We are here. Um, I think we're going to pray first. Um, we kind of took a little hiatus the last Eight few days. weeks. And yeah. just things kind of got a little crazy for us. So, But we are back. Um, and uh, Ready to try it again. Ready to try again. So, all right. Well, I guess we're going to pray first. I'll let Ron lead out. Okay. Lord, we come before you. We give you thanks for this day, for this opportunity, Father. And Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be here with us and uh, help us to speak the truth, Lord, and speak our hearts. And most importantly, that people be encouraged, Father, we pray. And those are our motives, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So last, I guess we're going to go, last Thursday we did a Bible study and kind of a small little Bible study deal, but it was on the book of Nehemiah. And in my own personal life, Nehemiah is absolutely one of my favorite books, if not absolutely my favorite uh, book in the Bible. Uh, it's a short book, only eight, nine chapters, I believe. I, I, it's not real long at all. And so what I want to do is, you know, I'm not going to read verse by verse, chapter, chapter, all that. Years ago, when I was in prison, after I first given my you know, heart to the Lord and I read the book of Nehemiah, the story of Nehemiah and everything, and I was like, wow, that is, right. that is so, you know, awesome. I just so admired his character and his... Uh, just who he was, you know, in his heart, you know, for his people and everything and everything that he went through. I mean, it's an awesome, awesome uh, story of restoration because that's how, that's what uh, his heart was to mm -hmm. restoration of, of Jerusalem and the walls. And so when I read that, um, I got to think, and I'm going to share, you know, when I was first believed, you know, and, and this is probably around, to the year 2000, you know, and uh, I'd read Nehemiah. And when I read Nehemiah and I read the part about the walls, what got me was that was my family. You know what I mean? The state of my family was literally torn down walls, broken gates and doors mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And, and you could identify. Absolutely. You know, and, and, and you know, God had, had, had put that on that, uh, compassion and desire and all that in, in Nehemiah's heart. And I felt that same, that same, com, that same deal. I don't know how the condition of my own family. Mm. And here's how me personally, I believe we are redeemed through the blood of Jesus made right with our father, you know, but after, after that, I mean, the work of restoration begins in us and in our families and, and, when I read Nehemiah, that's, that's how it, how it hit me mm. was, you know, that was everything being broken down and in ruins and desolate and all this kind of stuff. That was the condition of, of my family at my own making of my own bad choices and uh, how I simply believed that it is God's will to restore my family. And I, and I, I simply believed, believed that, and I still believe that with all my heart. And I've seen God do a lot, a lot. I mean, just a lot. The picture of how he does that in, in each individual li life will be different. Yeah. And I can only explain, exp you know, want to explain how in my life it worked out. So that's, it's not, uh, but it's also this is our testimony of what God has done uh, in our family, and and when I, you know, when I first read this, I was in prison. I had been out of a gang, going through, uh, just going through what you go through in prison, you know, just mm -hmm. those days. But the condition of my family at that time was I had uh, one of my sons, Ronnie, was locked up in a juvenile facility. My uh, my youngest son, Randy. Um, what had, had been in, in and out of trouble with law. And then, I mean, it was just a bunch of brokenness and it really, you know, it hurt my, it, it, Lord, I want you to restore my family. Please restore my story as I read it. Yeah. So, uh, 
I want to go through and I want to just read in chapter one, uh, verses five through 11. And this is basically uh, Nehemiah's heart. And, and the whole story I, I recommend, uh, we're, we're only going to go through uh, maybe chapter one and two a little bit on some things. But I, I highly recommend that each individual, if you want to get the whole, everything, the, everything, read it for yourself. And it's really, it's really, really short, really. But one, five through 11 says, and I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. Please let your ear be attentive and your eyes be open that you may hear the prayer of your servant, which I pray before you now day and night for the children of Israel, your servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Both my father's house and I have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinances which you commanded your servant Moses. Remember, I pray the word that you commanded your servant Moses, saying, If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though some of you were cast out to the farthest part of the heavens, yet I will, yet I will gather them from there and bring them to the place which I have chosen as a dwelling for my name. Now these are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. O oh Lord, I pray, please let your servant ear be attentive to the prayer of your servant and to the prayer of your servants who desire to fear your name and let your servant prosper this day, I pray, and grant him mercy in the sight of this man, for I was the king's cupbearer. So he was... How, I mean, if you read this story, I mean, how uh, people, you, you could say, what a coincidence. Well, it's absolutely no coincidence that this guy just so happens to be Jewish and the king's cupbearer mm -hmm. at, this, at this time. And the cool thing about this, if you picture this, is that he goes to the king for everything that he's going to need for restoration, right? He goes to the king and what's the king do? gives him everything he needs. Yeah. Everything. Here's everything you're going to need to restore those walls. Boom. There it is. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, there were things that happened, you know, the king and him talked and this and that, you know, and if you want to read that, go, please go and read that. But everything that Nehemiah would need, all the materials to restore the walls of Jerusalem were miraculously, and I'm talking like, man, it's probably like $3 billion in today's money of materials that would be needed to restore those walls. Yeah. And so what's cool about that was everything that was needed was provided to Nehemiah. Yeah. And so, I mean, you can imagine uh, he goes back. I mean, that's his heart for his people. So in verse uh, chapter 2, I want to go to chapter 2. And through this, uh, before this, like I said, they're real short chapters. If you want to uh, read it, chapter two, uh, Nehemiah is sent to Judah. So in verse 11, it says, So I came to Jerusalem and was there three days. Then I arose in the night, I and a few men with me. I told no one what my God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem, nor was there any animal with me except the one on which I rode. And I went out by night through the valley gate to the serpent well and the refuge gate and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and its gates which were burned with fire. Then I went to the fountain gate and to the king's pool, but there was no room for the animal under me to pass. So I went up by night by the valley and viewed the wall. Then I turned back and entered by the valley gate and so returned. And the officials did not know where I had gone or what I had done. I had not yet told the Jews the proof. Then I said to them, You see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lies waste and its gates are burned with fire. Come, let us build the wall of Jerusalem, 
that we may no longer be a reproach. And I told them of the hand of my God which had been good upon me, and also of the king's words that he had spoken to me. So they said, Let let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to this work, to this good work. So at this point you get here and everybody's in agreement, you know, I mean, uh, Nehemiah does his thing, goes out, takes a look at, 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 at everything, then comes in and tells all these people. And so they come into agreement. Yeah, let's start res- restoring the walls. Well, look what happens just right as they come into agreement. Verse 19 says, But when Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard of it, they laughed at us and despised us and said, What is this thing that you are doing? Will you rebel against the king? Immediately, when when the enemy sensed that there was going to be restoration, that things were happening, they went against these guys immediately to start mocking them. Now, Sambalat, that guy's name means like man of sin or sins a lot, or, you know, you call him sin a lot, you know, yeah. or whatever. I mean, this guy, were, these were evil, evil rulers of their heathen nations at that time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but doesn't it kind of, you know, there's something that happens when people are mocked. I, I was looking with my eyes at the conditions in my family and they were really, you know, they were, uh, they it hurt. It, they weren't, you know, it was, it was bad. A lot of bad things going on and a lot of bad things that had happened. And it was discouraging. And then you would have people, you know, they would question, well, does God do that? They would mock you for, you want to share that? Well, yeah, I believe God's going to restore my family. Yeah. Well, it definitely doesn't look like it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you hold on to that. And that's what I... You know, throughout the Word of God, reading it as a new believer, but especially in this in this story, it was like that's the heart of God is to restore that which is broken. Yeah, and and yeah, this is a story about the walls of Jerusalem to everything, but but to me, it was it was the condition of 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 my family that they were in at, yeah. at that point. And a, another thing that that those that mockery can do or whatever is, is it can make you question things question what you believe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we know that the word says, if we pray according to God's will, what we ask will be done according to God's will. Yeah. I mean, that's like the perfect prayer, isn't it? Yeah. So you can't just pray and hope for the best. You know that what you're praying is God's will. And that's what, you know, I began praying years and years and years ago, man, this is like, 2000, you know, uh, 99 and all that. God restore my family. God, please restore my family. And that was, that was it. That was, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those, those were my prayers. And, and he, you know, the very beginning began with forgiveness because there were a lot of, there was some forgiveness that needed to to happen between, uh, me and my dad, you know, and I asked my mom to forgive me. And so that's where the forgiveness began. And then, you know, it was like those relationships were, were were starting to be restored. Yeah, he did that. Now there were other relationships where, man, they don't happen. I mean, you can't. There's no way to envision how this is going to go down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't yeah. picture whatever. It's just, is this God's will? Yes, I'm praying it, Lord. How, how it goes down, and, and some things that are hard is is family members or loved ones that don't know the Lord and that are out there yeah. and some of the things that they can say or the, or the subtle things, man, those, those hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. really, really hurt because it's almost like being a, a safety man. You have to care more about the person than they do about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of a hard place to, but when it's with your children and your loved ones, I mean, you love them, mm-hmm. but that takes, I mean, this is in my own family. It's 20, 
23 years later. So, I mm. mean, this, all of this, you know, didn't, doesn't happen overnight or whatever. And in each individual's circumstances are different. That's their testimony or, or however. Yeah. But what I had to come to, and these are, this is really the, the first thing that I came to. And it's also the first thing, ironically, that, uh, that, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah and all of the, uh, Israelites there came to was, is this God's will? Yeah. Is God actually going to be cut? Because then they start getting mocked. And I mean, things aren't quite, I mean, mm -hmm. this isn't like, you know, uh, family restoration. God's way is not a Hallmark channel movie. No, <laughs> it <laughs> is nothing like that no. whatsoever, especially to the degree of, of brokenness and whatever. But, but another thing I'm reminded of this when, because Sambalat, Geshem, and Tobiah, they're going to show up when this is going down. Yeah. When they they're in restoration, because they, they have these, these specific ways that they attack Nehemiah. And what I want to do is I'm like, okay, I want to know what these little, these, these little things are, right? Yeah. So yeah. let's go to, to Ephesians 6 real quick. This is easy. Easy to get back there. So Ephesians 6, and I'm going to begin at uh, verse 10 to 13. So it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So when I, when I read that, therefore, here's verse 13, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So if you go back up here to the top of it, in verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Well, I wanted to, to know, you know, what exactly does, does, you know, the definition of wiles. So I looked it up and the definition of wiles is devious or cunning strategies employed in manipulating or persuading someone to do what one wants. So doesn't it make perfect sense that you would want to know what the evil strategies are that Satan would use against us Yeah. in order to be able to stand? Because we, what we're standing against are, are these strategies from 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 these evil uh you know the principalities and everything at work against uh the, the things of god i mean this is of course that's going to go against the work of restoration i mean it is it is spiritual warfare yeah you know what i'm saying and, yeah. and the strategies well knowing that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood so who's behind tobiah geshem and sambalat Oh, Satan. Absolutely. I mean, that's a, a no-brainer that it's Satan motivating them. But what is his strategy? Well, the first, the, the first tool that he threw at him that he had in his strategy was to mock them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, and discourage them yeah. and have them question, you know. But, but I want to also uh, continue what I was what I was reading. Um, oh, I lost my place. Anyway, anyway, there, there is a very, that's what I noticed in that was, was the strategy that the enemy was using to discourage the work. And I could see how in my own life, uh, that discouragement and seeing things that weren't working out like I had envisioned them or whatever, uh, and, you know, wanting it or maybe thinking that those, that kind of restoration happens overnight. Well, it, it doesn't, it takes many years of holding on to that, 
yeah. that I believe restoration in my family is God's will. Yeah. Holding that, holding on to that in your heart, because uh, the conditions of some of our uh, family members or people that we love, I mean, those, those can be some scary scary conditions, you know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. And, or wherever they may, and it could be, you know, whatever addictions or, or all sorts of different stuff going on in their life. And it's like, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't see you restoring this. What is going on? You know, and we just have to hold on to that and hold on to that and hold on to that because yeah. we don't live by our sight or what we hear. We live by faith in the word of God. Yeah, and that's what is going to sustain us through these times and uh, of being attacked by the enemy because the work of restoration is happening in our, in our, in our lives, and it's not on our timetable either. Because I mean, there are just so many things that have happened in my family, the the restoration that is just like way beyond what I even imagined God would do, as in bringing. A son that I didn't know I had back 39 years later, a niece I didn't know I had back 35 years later, a granddaughter I didn't know I had back seven years, eight years later, mm-hmm. and and I mean you can look and go, oh that's just co- that's not coincidence. That yeah. is restoration, yeah. and that my sons know who the Lord is, and and so initially regardless of what we see with our eyes and hear with our ears, we the only thing we have to hold on to is that this is God's will. Yeah. And we have to stand and know what the wiles of the devil, what his strategies are to try to get to, to I mean, stop it happening because what's his whole purpose? Steal, yeah. kill, destroy. Yeah. That's, we know that. So it's just sometimes a matter of, of holding on to what we believe in our hearts. Does God restore families? Yes. I believe that with all my heart. I've seen him do that, but the timetable on that and how that all works out is, is on, you know, that's his between him and you, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but we do, we do have our heart, our, our part. Yeah. And our part is to believe. Yeah. And I mean, there are times when, when, when I've uh, talked with, with family members or, or whatever and, you know, back f- through the years and they have, may have been wherever they are in life or whatever. And some of the things I heard of, it's like kind of scary in my heart, you know, yeah. because I want all of my family, not so much that they go to, he- to not go to hell. I want them to know the God that I've have, have grown to know over my life mm-hmm. and to, to, yeah. to be able to lean on him and trust him and, and, and go to him for grace as they walk through this life. And I want that passed down to, to uh, my grandchildren. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I believe restoration is absolutely uh, God's will, but through the story of Nehemiah, we'll see how much uh, spiritual warfare and stuff came against that work because, I mean, and picture this. I mean, this is also a picture of the family unit in the United States right now. It's all busted up. Yeah, Dads aren't where they need to be. Moms aren't, you know what I mean? It's all yeah. busted up. And I believe God is, it, there is a revival happening. And it's happening one heart and one family at a time as people are healed and believe, hey, God's going to restore this. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's ugly or whatever. God is going to restore this and, and, and to, to love those family members where, wherever they are. And that's all, you know, it can be hard at times. You know, and, and if there's unforgiveness in the hearts, that has to be number one that, you know, mm-hmm. ask to be, you know, forgive or whatever. Now the, their part that's on, that's on them, but that's where it became, uh, began with me was that forgiveness and, that relationship established with my dad that was strong and my mom and my sisters and my sons and just all throughout my wife that God gave me throughout all of my, my family. I mean, it's awesome, but it doesn't come without uh, attacks from our enemy. You know, so uh, it shows that we're that that, I mean, just looking at the condition of the family unit in in the United States should be a testimony of, 
of how much we need Nehemiahs in, yeah. in, in, in our uh, society, in our families, you know, uh, yeah. and I mean that in a man and a woman too, you know, the, the, the mothers or the sisters or, or whoever are, who are the ones who are praying, you know, we're high priests. And so, I mean, we, we, we're interceding, we're praying for our family, Lord, yeah. Yeah. you know, so, and, and there's going to be, like I said, attacks against it. So just want to encourage everybody and, and we'll try to talk more about this subject as we go and maybe, uh, uh, look at some of the other different ways that that these Sambalat and them uh, came at Nehemiah to try to stop the work because there there were a bunch of different ways, you know. So we can read that, and so we just hope everybody be blessed today. And uh, that's kind of our message that God is in the work of of is in the uh, He restores, God restores. Yes, yes, that is true. I believe in, in the power of God's restoration work in our hearts, and it just flows out to our family. Yeah. So. Amen. Well, all right. Well, that will conclude today. We just want to pray everybody be encouraged today. God yes. bless y'all. And y'all have a great afternoon.